Okay, here's a demonstration uh, for my good friend Bert of how to use uh, different recording modes in Reaper to um, punch in record, uh, to overdub and generally do good things to correct mistakes and to add um, overdubs to tracks. Uh, a couple of ways of doing it. Um, one setting to check that's useful in all of the different versions of how to do this uh, is this one. So if you go to options and preferences into project media item defaults Reaper normally comes with this second box the box titled overlap and crossfade items when splitting it comes with it unchecked check that that's useful later for trying to blend in our second takes basically what punching recording is doing is instead of recording a whole new take that is the whole length of the timeline um, of the song what it'll do is it'll enable us using two different methods to isolate a section of the uh, track or the timeline uh, and to just record into that section and then blend it in or over a bit. So the easiest way I find to do it is use the time selection mode um, and the way to do that is um, simply highlight an area of the track that you want to overdub or re record a second take to uh, and then change the record mode from record mode normal to record mode time selection auto punch. So once I've done that, uh, I'm using a, I've got I've recorded a clip here of uh, I will follow. There's an error somewhere around here. There's some notes that the edge never played. So just have a quick listen to how it sounds now, and then we'll see what it sounds like when we've corrected it. <laughs> Somewhere around here, there's some notes he never played, and we're going to replace that section with a second take and see if we can seamlessly integrate it. So, I've selected a region around the error by left clicking and dragging. It's best to go nice and wide, so you've got more recording to play with. You can always narrow it down later. I've changed the record mode by right clicking on the record button and selecting time selection auto punch, and we're good to go. If I rewind the transport right to the the beginning, it'll give me plenty of time to get back into the rhythm of uh, the song. So what you'll hear now when I hit record is you'll hear the first take play here but no recording will be made. As soon as it hits this time selection the first take will drop out and all you'll hear is me re-recording. It'll start recording when it hits the end the first take comes back and my recording, my new recording drops out. Here we go, let's see if we can get it in time. Slightly out of time, but it'll do. Um, so I'll need to save that second take, as you would in a normal take, and you can see it appear there. Now if I was to replay this, in this region, I've now got three items in this track. Uh, I've got a region where I've just got one take, the original take available. I've got a region where I've got a second item with two takes available, and I can select between take one or take two. I want to hear take two now, obviously. And then I've got a third region which has got one take available, the original. Let's get rid of that time selection by pressing escape. Let's just see how that sounds. It'll probably sound a bit lumpy. Not too bad, a bit lumpy. Uh, but at least the notes are right. So now we need to smooth it out a bit. Okay, to smooth it out, a couple of things we can do. We can try and make sure these transitions occur at sort of sensible pl places in the uh, rhythm. Let's just see how, where that one's occurring right now. It's probably occurring a bit early. So if I hover my mouse somewhere over the join, I get these. This, the, the cursor changes into the two brackets uh, with an arrow between them. If I hold click and hold my left button and then just move to the right ever so slightly, that'll move the join uh, from 
those are two items. Similarly on the way out, it's probably happening a bit late so again find that cursor with the two brackets and the double headed arrow and just drag it in a bit. I want them to roughly occur around there I think, the transitions. The other thing we can do is instead of it being a, an abrupt transition we can blend the, the, the transition from one take to another. The way to do that this is really quite tricky. You've got to be very careful to watch the cursor here. So the last thing you want to do is move any of these items in time because that will just clearly throw it all out. Just undo that. So watch what you're doing on this bit. To get to open up the... Um, to, to, to create a crossfade what I'm going to do is just open up the volume envelopes for the two uh, for the various sections. So to do that if I hover it in the top right hand corner of the first take I get this arc with two arrows going out of it, left click that, drag it to the left, similarly just hover to the top left of the second take, get the arc, hold, drag to the right. Now that is a fade out, fade in, which is clearly going to sound horrible. What I need to do is turn that into a, a crossover, and to do that I hover somewhere near the middle, and I get a, of the, of the middle take, I get a right bracket with a double headed cursor. Just click and hold the left button. Just drag slightly to the left and you can see that's now turned into a crossover. And again using my arcs now I can position where how long that's going to take and, and where it's going to and where it's going to take place. So that sounds a bit better. Probably a bit early. So, and then on the way out the same. Open up the envelopes with the arc, turn them into fade in, fade out, fade in, and then turn the fade out, fade in into a crossover by finding the left bracket cursor with the double headed arrow, left click, just move to the right slightly and there it appears. And just by taking a bit of time and care with how long and where these transitions will take place you can get some pretty good joins. Open it all up again now. See how that sounds. A bit of a timing problem at the end there, but I think that was a terrible second take that I did. by moving the join. It covers that, that poor playing up. So there we go. First method. Okay, so just to try and show a little bit more clearly how to set up the crossfade and uh, move the interface between one take and another. I've zoomed the screen in a little bit so you can see the cursors hopefully a little bit more clearly. So I zoomed right in on, a, on, on the track that contains our two takes. So over here we've got uh, the item that contains the first take. In the middle we've got the item that contains take one and take two. Make sure take two is selected. And over here we've got uh, the third item that contains uh, the first the part of the first take again. So watching the cur cursors carefully to change the boundary or move the boundary between uh, the items hover the cursor over the join between the two and you get this double bracketed cursor with two arrows if you left click and hold that you can see more or less of the second take becoming available you can change where the transition is going to take place in time and similarly if you hover towards the top left of the second item, the middle item, you get that cursor with the arc and the two arrows. Click and hold that with the left button and drag it out to the right. You get the volume envelope for the second item up here. Select the first item, get its arc with the two little arrows, 
bring out the volume envelope for that item. We've got the fade out and fade in now. I want to turn that into a um, crossfade. So if I hover somewhere just in the middle item, the second item, and I get this single bracket, the right bracket with a double arrow, click and hold that, and then just drag it to the left. That turns the transition to the crossfade. And then using the arc cursors, I can move the two volume envelopes so that I can get a smoother transition occurring either more quickly or more slowly to try and make the blend between the two takes uh, smoother. And same thing at this end of the take. I can open up the volume envelopes for the fade out of the second take and the fade in of the uh, back in of the original take. Again, get a single bracket, this time a left bracket with double arrows. Turn that into a crossfade. Hopefully, you can see those cursors on this version or this section.